at the ground. Good news for England was that Mike Gatting's thumb allowed him to make his first appearance in the series. And David Gower's injured wrist was also pass fit for him to play. The pitch, well grassed and retaining a certain amount of moisture, caused plenty of discussion for the England management team of Bob Willis and Tony Brown. Though Viv Richards showed no concern as he limbered up to skipper the West Indies on his home ground for the first time. A public holiday meant carnival time for the Antiguans, with a ticket for the match a prize possession, and the atmosphere was no less festive inside the ground. Gower had won the toss and sent the West Indies into bat. Gordon Greenwich looked to be at ease from the very first ball he received from Botham. But Botham was to suffer more in the next over, bowled by Foster to Haynes. A sharp chance as Haynes plays some way away from his body, but one that a man with 96 catches in tests might have been expected to hold. Foster was generally wayward in direction, but Greenwich survived a slash over the slips when chasing a wide one. And Foster persisted with his line, Greenwich taking full advantage with some spectacular shots. At the other end, both of them was bowling well. King Dial in full approval of that ball, and then both of them came close to getting Greenwich caught and bowled. <laughs> Didn't quite carry as signalled by the bowler, but next ball, both of them got his man. Swinger pitched right up, and Greenwich's off stump is on its way out of the ground. Richie Richardson has enjoyed a marvellous series, and he was determined to do well on his home ground. Shots like these mean his second in public acclaim only to Richards in Antigua. He was no less severe on Ellison, who'd replaced Foster at the top end. Foster came back and failed to deceive Haynes with a slower ball. Not for the first time, Embury's offspin slowed down the onslaught, and Richardson looked uncomfortable and tied down. And just before lunch, Embury struck, with Richardson out for 24, caught by Slack at short leg. The ball turning appreciably to find the inside edge and then pad before Slack completes the job for his Middlesex colleague. 63 for two at lunch, and Embury nearly took another wicket just after the interval, bowling to the new batsman, Gomes. A little extra bounce undoing the batsman, but both of them seem slow to react in the slips. When Ellison dropped short, Haynes was quick to seize on it and take the score on to 87 for two. But Haynes was in more trouble when Embry took over at the top end. Between lunch and tea, Haynes and Gomes were to add only 63 from 27 overs. But England suffered another setback when Ellison tweaked his hamstring. Haynes went on to his 50 with a hook off both of them. The England bowler, in a long spell, found it warm work trying to engineer the next breakthrough. They knock 
promiscuous looking shot by Gomes off Foster, but it caused more discomfort for Ellison, who this time had to leave the field with cramp rather than his earlier hamstring trouble. It was 126 for two at tee when Embury, reverting to the pavilion end, finally accounted for Gomes. Gomes beaten all ends up by Embury, to the delight not only of the England team, but also the Antiguan crowd. Gomes batted 140 minutes for his 24 runs, and his dismissal made way for Viv Richards. Resuming in his role as vice-captain, Gatting offered some advice to Embury, who continued to bowl with great control. But Richards delighted the crowd with three boundaries in successive balls from both of them. Even Embury felt the weight of Richard's bat. But Botham eventually got his man, caught at long leg by Gooch, as Richards goes for yet another big hit and is out for 26. A disappointment for Richards and the crowd, but when Ellison returned to the attack, Haynes completed his century and the crowd could celebrate once more. Haynes' eighth test century, coming off 222 balls in five and a half hours. And before the close, there were more celebrations as he brought up the 200 for the West Indies. finished undefeated with 117 out of a total of 228 for four. Dujon, the other not out batsman, has 17. The England bowling honours went to Embury with two for 65 from 30 overs. Botham had two for 64 of 21 overs and two more wickets when play resumes later today will give him a new world record. Well, just how close Ian Botham is, she's shown there.